Morning San Antonio starts right now. A police officer is hit while driving on the city's southwest side. That driver took off. What we know now about the suspect as well as the condition of the officer just ahead here on GMSA. Bear County seeing a lower number of new COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations are declining. We're going to have the latest numbers of cases released by our city. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 78 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does this coming work week look like? We're going to check in with our Sarah Spivey in just a few minutes. But for now, good morning. Sixth class for this Sunday, August 9th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Sunday. Uh, I kept to my word. I told mm -hmm. Max that I was going to try to avoid the sun, and I and I did for the most you part. You guys didn't go outside. <laughs> well, we we went in the shade. So. I just watched a lot of TV, so you it's did. fair. So you stayed inside. Stayed inside. Okay. Didn't see rain. Did you see rain? No, but Sarah, mm. I hear someone did. Yeah, our coworker Rob, who's over there at the prompter, saw some rain. He was one of the lucky 10% that got to see a little rain yesterday. And today's forecast, Katie and I were joking. It's a copy and paste forecast, you know, control C, control V. That's kind of what we're going to be doing to the forecast. We're starting off with temperatures much like they were yesterday, right at about 78 degrees at the airport, 76 in Bulverde, 73 in Bernie, 74 in Comfort, 74 in Kerrville, and 75 in Hondo. Now, looking ahead today, maybe you want to go to the Riverwalk or to a local park. It is going to be very hot in the afternoon. Once again, highs will be close to 100 degrees, and we will carry a 10% chance for a stray shower storm. Southeast winds at 5 to 15. And Max was asking, what does your work week look like? Hot. H-O-T. Max. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a driver crashing into a San Antonio police unit on the city's southwest side. Emergency crews called out to the intersection of Old Pearsall Road and Hilburn Drive. The suspect is expected to face some charges now. Alicia Barrera is live downtown with more on this officer-involved accident. Now, Alicia, what's the condition of that police officer? Well, it may be hard to believe for some, but that officer has zero injuries, is now at home resting, and we know that they were T-boned, and investigators suspect that the driver at fault was going well above the speed limit. This happened around midnight last night. And again, that officer is OK. According to investigators, the police officer involved was on Hilburn Drive and made a left onto Old Pearsall Road to head south. The suspect, who was driving a pickup truck, was allegedly speeding northbound on Old Pearsall Road, lost control, and that's when they slammed into the side of the police unit. Most of the damage on the video can be seen towards the tail end of that SAPD unit. And we know the suspect took off from the scene after hitting the officer. According to police, the suspect left skid marks and debris near the scene and drove about a quarter of a mile without their front tire. But he wasn't able to go far and police were eventually able to arrest that suspect. But what's next for this suspect? I have that information for you in the next half hour here on GMSA. All right, thank you, Alicia. Bear County is seeing a lower number of new COVID-19 cases. However, the death toll continues to increase for the fifth consecutive day. So let's take a look at those numbers. There are 232 new cases of COVID-19. That brings the total to 42,531 confirmed cases since the pandemic started. 10 more people have died in the community, bringing the death toll to 432. 734 people are hospitalized of those 328 are in the ICU and 229 are on ventilators. 15% of staffed hospital beds are available and 52% of ventilators are available. San Antonio police asking for your help finding a teenager who hasn't been seen in a whole week. Police searching for 16 year old Leslie Seha. She was last seen in the 600 block of Willow Street back on July 28th. Seha described as five feet tall, brown hair, brown eyes. If you have any information that can help police, you're asked to contact them as soon as possible. That number on your screen, 210-207-7660. In your morning headlines, two U.S. veterans have been sentenced to 20 years in prison for participating in an alleged plot against Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. The Venezuelan Attorney General tweeted that U.S. citizens Luke Denman and Aaron Berry confessed to, quote, crimes a conspiracy association, illicit trafficking of war, weapons, and terrorism, end quote, during a preliminary hearing. Now, it has not been possible to verify if the men had access to lawyers during the trial or if they actually admitted the charges against them. 
And today, Japan marking the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Nagasaki. Survivors and families of victims offering flowers and prayers at the memorial ceremony in the northwestern city. In 1945, the United States dropped two atomic bombs, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Tens of thousands of people killed on impact, more people dying later from burns or radiation-related illnesses. For decades, Japan has been pushing for a world free of nuclear weapons. In Lebanon, protesters occupied the Ministry of Economy and Trade, the Ministry of Environment and the Banking Association building in downtown Beirut. Protesters and Lebanese security forces clashed in Beirut yesterday on what the demonstrators called Judgment Day. That comes after Tuesday's devastating blast that left over 150 people dead and 6,000 wounded. Lebanon State News Agency reported demonstrators also took over the Ministry of Energy and Water on the Kurdish. And processing the pandemic and the protests is a hard task for children and many adults right now. So for some kids who may not have the words to express their emotions, art might be their tool of choice. CNN's Nadia Romero takes us through the space filled with creations from kids across the globe trying to better understand the protests against racial injustice. No peace. During conflict, peace. art is the outlet for 16-year-old Washington, D.C. native Toriel Coleman. Art is definitely a way you can hail yourself. From drawing to speaking about his history. I was four years old when I witnessed my first homicide. But when he saw the video of George Floyd, I can breathe. he couldn't find the words to describe his feelings. I was very disturbed by what I saw. Protests erupting around the world was a call to action for recent Harvard University graduate Kareem Farishta. He wanted to give kids like Toriel a voice. They didn't have a moment to express, and at times with words, the, the trauma and the rawness that they were feeling. With the founders of Envy, a virtual gallery, Kareem created a space for reflection and dialogue. Punch. The Art for Justice Virtual Museum, a rocky entrance signaling the nation's rough racial history. And then you see the work of young artists. 155 submissions from 14 states and five countries, including these four paintings by Toriel and his peers at the after school program, Life Pieces to Masterpieces. Connect, create, contribute, celebrate. <laughs> artwork alongside others, turning problems into progress. There are individual pieces of art, but they're telling a collective story. Their lack of language is not a lack of love. We can build a safer, better community. I'm Nadia Romero reporting. And time now, 608, 78 degrees out. And many of us have been forced to work from home due to the pandemic, but for working women, this new arrangement could be hurting a little bit. The reason why is still ahead on GMSA. All right, guys, how do you feel about eating mac and cheese for breakfast? Sure. Let's go. <laughs> Kraft has come up with a limited edition boxes of mac and cheese just for breakfast. We're gonna explain the details next. I hope it's not cereal. It looks like regular mac and cheese, but just with a new label, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> That's a heck of a tease, though, Steph. I know. Can't wait to see. Looking outside right now, 78 degrees. We're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back, and happy Sunday. In your morning consumer headlines, Wendy's eating McDonald's for breakfast. Well, not quite. Consumers are choosing to buy breakfast at Wendy's instead of its competitors. In March, Wendy's launched an innovative morning menu with items like the Baconator and the Frosty Cinco that target a younger, what is it? Frosticino. Frosticino, my bad. Haven't been to Wendy's in a while. I was Either way. Say, maybe it's South Texas Wendy's, yeah, <laughs> for five Wendy's bucks. Wendy's breakfast sales <laughs> surged since then. They now account for about 8% of revenue. Pretty cool. And it's a kid's there dream come true. What do you mean kid? Anybody's dream. <laughs> Chowing down on a big bowl of mac and cheese to start the day. So Kraft has come out with these limited edition boxes with the word breakfast over where dinner usually is. The boxes mm. will be on sale next year, but if you tweet hashtag KMC for breakfast and hashtag sweepstakes, you'll be entered to win a breakfast box. Every time the hashtag is used, Kraft donates 10 boxes of their mac and Aww. cheese to feed the children so that's, that's very good. good good cause so sarah i gotta ask are you a wendy's fanatic 
No, I just I just remember like reading Frostuccino and being like, that's weird. I guess it's like a play on <laughs> cappuccino. So. Mm. I do. I have eaten the Wendy's chicken nuggets before. I would oh eat. yeah, well chicken but nuggets I everywhere. I will say, fantastic. personal preference, mm -hmm. I like McDonald's breakfast better. Okay, I do It's too. not an official endorsement. No, no. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Wendy's was my first job. Can we also That's pause? awesome. <laughs> pause Let's for take a second. A look at this rain, okay? People starting baconators for breakfast. Bold. Yeah, Sounds good. really bold. All right, so this is the rain that we were talking about oh. earlier. Just a isolated oh. shower. Uh, in southern uh, San Antonio, south southern Bear County, rather. Uh, and my favorite thing here is you can see the rays of the sun off in the distance. So really impressive to see that some folks, yeah, did get a little rain yesterday, but unfortunately most of us did miss out. I want to show you outside right now. You can see uh, that it is fairly cloudy. It's mostly cloudy at the moment, and we've got 78 degrees as our temperature right now. Uh, humidity is at 87%, so it it is doggone humid outside with winds from the south at about 10 miles per hour. It's already 80 in New Braunfels, 80 in Del Rio, 79 in Eagle Pass. It's 74 in Uvalde, 72 in Rock Springs, 77 in Catula, and 77 in Pleasanton. And it is humid. Dew points are in the 70s. We've already got a heat index. It already feels like it's in the 80s because of this high humidity out there. I want to show you yesterday's radar. Okay, this is not a current look at radar. This is yesterday's radar. You can see how we had some showers develop along the coastal plain. One or two of them made it to the I-35 corridor. The reason I'm showing you this is because today's weather will be very similar to yesterday's. Notice that again, some lucky folks in Southern Bear County saw a little bit of rain. Uh, some folks out near Canyon Lake saw a very isolated shower. The chance for rain today, my friends, is once again only 10%. That is it. 10%. Most of us will not see any rain, but we're kind of grasping at straws here to, to see a little bit of rain on the radar. So hope you are one of the lucky ones that gets some isolated showers uh, because again, most of us will just simply be hot. This is a look at high temperatures for this afternoon. 102 in Del Rio, 100 in Eagle Pass, 100 in Uvalde. I always say it's never good when my dress matches the temperature map and that is the case today. 100 for the high in New Braunfels, 100 in Pleasanton. It'll be in the mid 90s though up in the hill country. So if you want to escape up into the hill country or if you live up in the hill country might be a good idea because temperatures will be closer to 95 for the afternoon high. Here's a look at today's forecast. Once again, there will be a breeze. Winds will be from the south up to 15 miles per hour, potentially gusting up to about 30 mi uh, 25 miles per hour at times. So keep that in mind. Mostly cloudy right now in the morning, 85 at 10, 90 at noon, partly cloudy in the afternoon, 100 degrees for the high temperature and that 10% chance for a stray shower. It's a little bit more active on the radar across the nation, especially across the central plains. But once again, there's a heat high just over North Texas that's going to keep us very hot over the next few days. Changed up the Bitmoji today. I am on a, uh, a little popsicle, staying cool. So yesterday it was a watermelon, today it's a popsicle. And again, look at those temperatures, 101 Tuesday and Wednesday. We're likely going to have a week of triple digits here uh, around San Antonio, or at least it'll feel like 100 anyway. Just a reminder that tomorrow is a CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day. We're going to reduce our use during the peak heating hours of the day to help to save a little bit on the power grid there. So one way that you can do that is avoiding doing the laundry during the peak ah. heating hours of the day and using big appliances. That's a good tip, especially when we're hitting triple digits. Yeah, for Thank sure. Thank you, Sarah. All right, thanks, Sarah. 617, 78 degrees out. In a restaurant in San Francisco, changing things up amid the pandemic. Still ahead on GMSA, we're gonna tell you what they have come up with to make sure their customers keep safe from COVID. Working where you live, living where you work, it's the new norm. They don't have that disconnect from leaving home to go to work, so they're still working at home. But when he's home, it's distracting too because we have opposite schedules. But is one person in your home doing more than their fair share? She does. It's not fair. New research found that women with full-time jobs, a partner, and children are spending 71 hours a week on child care, elder care, and household chores during the pandemic. Compare that to 51 hours for men. I feel like I'm cleaning up more. 
doing some more stuff around. The forced working from home environment has created a mandatory double-double shift for women, adding homeschooling and taking care of their parents to an already packed day. Try to shift that 71 hours and 50 hours of household work into more like 60-60. Still not ideal, but it would give women 10 more hours a week to sleep, exercise, or just take care of themselves. The new double-double shift could also be impacting women's health. Since the start of the pandemic, 25% of women are experiencing anxiety, racing hearts, and trouble sleeping compared to just 11% of men. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> You had some comments. I did. I Any was, feedback you'd like I, to hear? I, I was going to be quiet but um, and not throw my husband under the mm. bus. But yes, we are, or at least I am, working a little bit harder than he is. That makes sense. But I think, uh, I don't know, it just comes with the territory, I guess. Yeah. 622, <laughs> 78 degrees out. And an igloo for businesses next on GMSA. What a restaurant in San Francisco is doing to make sure their customers keep safe from the coronavirus. And welcome back. It is 625. So San Francisco has taken outdoor dining to a new level. Talk about, we talk about the bubble with mm -hmm. the NBA. This is a new kind of bubble. The pandemic and the homelessness on the streets, they prompted the restaurant to enclose diners into domes. Take a look. Here's how it works. At the entrance to the dome, guests put their purses and personal belongings in the basket outside to keep them safe and off the pavement. Once inside, the table is not preset, which is intentional to make sure everything is sanitized. And after each seating, the domes are aired out and wiped clean with disinfectant. So Kenny Chiro Matsura is the general manager of the Sushi Hashiri restaurant. He was inspired to install the structures by so-called quarantine greenhouses in other cities around the world. And in case you're wondering, the big bubbles, they cost about $1,400 each. Wow. Ah. Yeah, that's uh, quite an investment. But well, you know kind what? of pretty, too. <laughs> it is pretty. If it works out, it works out. I just, you know, I wish all those small businesses and small restaurants the best of luck. On that the is true. Everybody's having to make changes right now. 626, 78 degrees out. And still ahead in our next half hour, we have a preview of this week's ex episode of KSET Explains Climate Change. And President Donald Trump signing multiple executive orders trying to address the economic fallout from this pandemic. We have the latest next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning, August 9th. Thanks for joining us this morning, and definitely yesterday it was inflatable pool time again. You guys pulled out the inflatable pool. <laughs> yes, with shade, but nice. we did, we did. Uh, you know, Rooney had been asking for it all morning long, and we were like, eh, okay. <laughs> so yesterday, we perfect in. day. You sure. didn't see rain. No, we did not. Our pal Ralph here did. But Sarah, is today another inflatable pool day? It is. It is another inflatable pool day. Really, honestly, there's only a 10% chance for an isolated shower or storm. Yeah, our buddy Ralph, he was pretty lucky to see some rain because, again, most of us missed out completely. And rain is not in the forecast for all of us today. Again, just a 10% chance. 78 degrees to start the day at the airport. It's 72 in Bernie, 74 in Comfort, 75 in Hondo, 78 in Castroville. 80 degrees in New Braunfels right now. It's warm in New Braunfels already. 74 at Stenson. So this is a happy coincidence. Stephanie was talking about inflatable pool. Let's do a poolside forecast. How does that sound? It's going to be hot this afternoon. 100 degrees for the high temperature. Uh, you know, you get the inflatable pool out. You can maybe get the hose out, whatever way to keep you cool. Uh, and we'll have a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm. Looking at the trans guide images, it looks like we're having a pretty good sunrise out there. I'll be back with a look ahead and we'll talk about KSAT explains climate change this week. It's going to be pretty neat. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a driver slamming into an SAPD patrol unit, then taking off, leaving a trail of debris and the police officer with no help. And it happened in the 5500 block of Old Pearsall Road, just east of Loop 410, just before midnight. Our Alicia Barrera is live downtown. Now, Alicia, you say police were eventually able to catch up to the suspect. 
Yes, that driver definitely wasn't able to get far. He was driving after the accident without the front tire, left a lot of skid marks and debris near the area of that accident, making it easier for police officers to track him down eventually. Take a look at the damage that was left behind. Again, this all happened overnight around midnight. According to police officers, the police officer involved was on Hilburn Drive and made a left turn onto Old Pearsall Road to head south. The suspect driving a pickup truck was allegedly speeding northbound on Old Pearsall Road, lost control, slammed into the side of the police unit and took off. Police say the suspect drove about a quarter of a mile around the block without the front tire before they were able to catch up to him and arrest him. Police say the driver is a man in his 40s. He is going to face multiple charges involved in this accident. And we also know that at the scene, well, where he was arrested um, nearby the scene, he was going to be evaluated under the suspicion of alcohol. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. New executive order signed by President Donald Trump. New effort to address the economic fallout from this pandemic. But now Democrats criticizing the measure, calling for Republicans to resume those negotiations. This as the U.S. is nearing another grim milestone, 5 million coronavirus infections. ABC's Karina Mitchell has more. President Trump sidestepping Congress Saturday night, issuing an executive order and three other directives. Restarting unemployment benefits, but cutting those weekly checks to $400, 75% to be paid by the federal government. The other 25% must be paid by the states. Extending eviction moratoriums, deferring interest on federal student loans, and enacting payroll tax cuts, something opposed by both parties. Through these four actions, my administration will provide immediate and vital relief to Americans struggling in this difficult time. However, the Constitution gives Congress, not the president, control over federal spending. Yesterday's move likely to face legal challenges, especially by cash-strapped states who've shouldered much of the financial burden fighting COVID-19. If legal action is brought against you on this, why not just work with Congress on this deal? Well, I'm not saying they're not going to come back and negotiate. They might very well come back and negotiate. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer released a joint statement saying in part, these announcements do not Nothing to increase testing, nothing to reopen schools, nothing to put food on the table for hungry families, nothing to prevent heroes being laid off across state and local government, nothing on many critical needs of the American people. And as parents in school districts across the nation grapple with how to return kids to schools safely, concerns over a rare illness linked to COVID-19, multisystem inflammatory syndrome, or MISC, which attacks a child's vital organs. Alarming numbers from the CDC showing the illness has killed at least 10 children, sickening nearly 600 others. Much like the virus itself, MISC is disproportionately impacting Latino and black children, accounting for nearly three quarters of all cases and health experts say obesity is the most common underlying medical condition. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Back here in the Lone Star State, Governor Greg Abbott extending his COVID-19 disaster declaration for all Texas counties affected by COVID-19. The declaration originally issued back on March 13th in a statement, Governor Abbott saying in part, quote, Renewing this disaster declaration will provide communities with the resources they need to respond to COVID-19. I urge Texans to remain vigilant in our fight against this virus, end quote. The Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission threatening to revoke the licenses of bars who refuse to remain closed. Now, Texas bars have been closed since June 26. Governor Greg Abbott signed the executive order that forces those businesses where 51% of their revenue comes from alcohol sales to shut down. The director of the TV's, a, excuse me, TABC says their biggest challenge has been enforcing that order. That person wrote in an open letter, quote, recently we have spoken with business owners who tell us they don't intend to follow the orders. On that note, I want to remind every member of this industry that it is a privilege to be in the alcoholic beverage business in Texas, end quote. During this pandemic, still a lot of questions looming when it comes to students and staff heading back to school. That's why today on Leading Essay at 8 a.m., the president of the San Antonio Alliance of Teachers and Support Personnel, Alejandra Lopez, will join us live. So we want your input and your questions as well. So head to the Leading Essay section of KSET.com and submit your questions. We now have an entire Send Us Your Questions section. 
And time now, 636, 78 degrees out. And picking up a hobby for a good cause, still ahead on GMSA, what a kid in Ohio is doing to help those who need it the most. And a new episode of KSAT Explains up next. We have a sneak peek of next week's KSAT Explains the Climate Change. We're going to be talking to our own Sarah Spivey, part of the special. And taking a look outside with live cam. 78 degrees and that is beautiful downtown San Antonio, but not too bright right now. <laughs> Hoping for a beautiful sunrise. <laughs> yes, I'm sure we'll see that later on and maybe Max will grab a picture. We shall see. Do my best, get my cardio even this morning. Good morning, welcome back, happy Sunday. Thank you for starting your day with us. It has become a hot button issue, but at its core, it is a scientific issue, not a political one. This week's episode of Case It Explains is all about the facts and science of climate change. Here's a preview. The issue has inspired debates, global agreements, and acts of protest. Some even argue it's simply not real. Anytime you're dealing with something that's gonna involve trillions of dollars, politics is gonna get involved with it. But science shows Earth's climate is changing and has been changing throughout history. That evidence has taken the form of rising temperatures, shrinking ice sheets, and more extreme weather events. Floods, hurricanes, wow. and raging wildfires. We would not be seeing the unprecedented extreme weather events that we're seeing if not for human-caused climate change. New research says children will bear 88% of the burden of disease related to climate change. You may notice the month of May was a little toastier than normal. And that's because Earth just experienced its hottest May on record. It's a global issue with local implications. But what does the future climate of Texas look like? Why is it something you should care about? And how did this issue become so polarizing? That was awesome graphics. All right, KSAT explains climate change available on demand Thursday, August 13th. And you're going to be able to stream it on demand on the KSAT TV app available on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other streaming devices. And one of our stars of the special, <laughs> right. Sarah Spivey right here. Yeah, Katie Blake and I, meteorologist Katie Blake and I are kind of taking the head on this and explaining climate change in a way that I hope will help people understand what it is and how the implications to Texas specifically and even here in San Antonio. Really interesting, we've got a great interview too with the Texas State Climatologist, the Texas State Climatologist, Dr. Nielsen Gammon. He's actually an old professor of mine at oh, Texas A&M cool. University. So there's a lot that we're gonna be talking about and explaining and again, that'll be available Thursday uh, of this week uh, dot com and you can stream it wherever but I thought that we could give you a little preview and we could do kind of a climate 101 Oh, it's really oh, okay. a weather okay. 101, but climate 101. I wasn't ready for this. I got to stretch. Yeah. Got to get ready. So, <laughs> greenhouse gases are gases that actually regulate our temperature. They're not necessarily a bad thing, but we've been hearing a lot about them, especially when it comes to uh, ampli amplified warming trends. And I wanted to ask you, what is the most abundant greenhouse gas Ooh. in the atmosphere? Steph, ladies first. Uh, my guess would be carbon dioxide. I am going to go with D, ozone. You're going to go with D? Okay, well, the answer is ah. water vapor. Yeah, water vapor actually keeps us really comfortable and warm here. If we didn't have our atmosphere, these greenhouse gases, the earth would be covered in ice. And so water vapor is actually really helpful, keeps us warm. The problem with greenhouse gases is that we're seeing them increase in number. Uh, and a lot of that does have to do with things we put into the atmosphere, like an abundance of carbon dioxide or methane. Methane comes from uh, a lot of the feedlots, uh, cows, for example. And water vapor is a positive feedback loop. Basically, the more water vapor you put in the air, the warmer it gets, and that evaporates more water vapor into the air. And so it's a positive feedback loop, and we're going to try to explain all of this in our KSAT Explains climate change this week. So I hope you'll be able to stream that. Now, uh, this is a beautiful picture sent in through our KSAT Connect feature last night. Once again, a beautiful sunset at Woodlawn Lake. You can notice how those uh, cumulus clouds were fairly tall, and we did have some isolated showers around San Antonio yesterday, very isolated. 
only 10%. And once again, we're going to have very similar weather, pretty much a copy and paste forecast of yesterday's weather. Right now outside, mostly cloudy, 78 degrees, just like we started the day yesterday. Humidity is at 87%. Dew points are in the mid 70s. You get the drill. It is very humid outside and it is muggy to start our uh, Sunday. 73 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 74 in Bandera, 75 in Hondo, 74 in Divine, 74 in Stinson, and 77 at JBSA Randolph. Zooming out, it's already 80 degrees in Del Rio, and yeah, it's humid out there. But I want to show you a little bit through time into the afternoon. Our dew points are actually going to fall into the 60s. So it's not going to be as humid in the afternoon as it is right now, and that's good news because we don't want much of a heat index value this afternoon. Still going to be hot. We'll be near 100. And then once again, as we start the day tomorrow, start the week tomorrow, it's going to be humid with dew points back into the 70s. So I want to show you today's rain chance. Much like yesterday, it's going to be confined to the coastal plain. Uh, isolated shower storm from Gonzales to Victoria to Beeville to Corpus Christi out to Houston as well. And then one or two of those may make it to that I-35 corridor. Yesterday, we saw an isolated shower make it across parts of Southern Bear County right at the Atascosa line. And we saw an isolated shower out near Canyon Lake in Comal County. That's about it. And once again, in the future gas, you can see that that's going to be the case today too. 20% at the coast, a stray shower storm out near uh, the I-35 corridor. We don't really know where that's going to happen, but we just know that there's a 10% chance. It's going to be hot though. High temperature at 100 degrees. We were at 100 yesterday. We'll be at 100 today. Uh, 103 potentially for Lake Hills, 101 for Seguin and New Braunfels. In the upper 90s for those in the higher elevations uh, closer to the hill country. Mostly cloudy still at 10, but we'll be partly cloudy in the afternoon. It's repeat weather for us today. Southeast winds at 5 to 15, so we will have a breeze. We could have gusts up to 20 to 25 miles per hour as well. It's quiet around uh, Texas, but around the nation, there are some showers and storms across the central plains. Heat high is going to be the main feature for us all week long. It does start to inch a little bit more to the west by the end of the week, but we've still got several days here where the heat high is going to be the big factor and it's going to get hot. High temperatures close to 101 on Tuesday and Wednesday, still near 100 throughout the rest of the week and into the weekend. And CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day is going to be on Monday. Tomorrow we'll try to reduce our use from about 3 to 7. So it's going to be a hot day tomorrow and we don't want to stress the power grid any more than we have to with us all cranking our AC up to down to like 68. So try to keep that <laughs> AC in the peak heating hours of the day closer to about 78 degrees. That sounds more reasonable. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 647, 78 degrees out. And puppies hard at work. These women are thinking outside the box to get more veterans service dogs. Just ahead on GMSA, the reason why hospitals are adopting these dogs. What you doing, bud? It's a long, grueling journey before a service dog can graduate into a veteran's arms. Even with the right breeding, years of training, and tens of thousands of dollars invested, Cody Bellinger says only 50% of the puppies at United States Veteran Service dogs graduate to become service animals each year. We have 1,900 applicants waiting for dogs in literally all 50 states. But at the Toro Infirmary, speech pathologist Maggie Homer and physical therapist Maggie Watson are trying to improve that statistic. Good boy. By training their puppies in a hospital, their dogs are getting a one-of-a-kind experience. Sit. Navigating around equipment, listening to commands. Stand. Even reading commands. Toro. Good boy. Skills that up their chances of graduating on becoming a full-service service dog for veterans. This program being implemented in the hospital environment is a good deal, big deal for veterans, but it's also a big deal in general. The hospital even noticed an unexpected bonus. Moral among staff seemed to change. There's nothing like having something around you that's just happy. Even motivating patients like Ryan Cashmore to get moving and go to physical therapy. And of course, you know, like puppies, he doesn't like a puppy. It was a win-win for veterans, for patients, and for staff. These puppy raisers hope it will be a model for other hospitals around the country. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 
So a 10-year-old from Ohio picked up the cello last year, but playing it isn't just for show, it's also for a purpose. Taryn Tien, thinking of others and trying to raise money for charity. Taryn, once a week, sits out here in front of his home in Ohio, puts a tip jar in front of him, starts playing for passers-by. The money he raises, the money that gets put into the jar, goes to the International Rescue Committee. It's important because um, I really don't like to see people like homeless or like people that like are just not really doing well and need help but aren't getting like enough help or need help. That's really cool. So the purpose of the International Rescue Committee is to help refugees in over 40 countries. The IRC provides refugees with resources like water, shelter, health care, and educational assistance. Oh my goodness. At first, you know, seeing him uh, playing so well, you know, from a distance, he actually looks older, but then you hear him start talking on like, oh, that's right, he's 10 years old. He looks really impressive. Yeah, good job. <laughs> also, shout out to the dogs because we've seen them do oh. a myriad of things. Oh, yes, and it's so comforting for a lot of people right now. Absolutely. All right, it is 6.53, it's 78 degrees, and it's time to talk birthdays. That's right. So I wanted to wish a special happy birthday to Camila, or I call her Cammy. This is my niece. She's turning 11 today. I can't believe she's turning 11. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. And next up, we have Stella, Aww. five years old. Happy birthday, Stella. Remember to keep sending your birthday pictures into KSAS.com. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here in Good Morning San Antonio. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, President Trump takes executive action after stimulus talks stall in Congress with millions of people unemployed. How soon will Americans see some relief? Plus the massive motorcycle rally, thousands of riders pouring into Sturgis, South Dakota this weekend. The gathering going on in spite of coronavirus concerns as numbers rise in many parts of the country. And finally, a royal tackling racial injustice. Prince Harry speaking out, an exclusive first look as he calls for change. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. Overnight on the city's southwest side, a San Antonio Police Department unit is T-boned by a pickup truck, and the driver of that truck took off, but police officers say that driver wasn't able to get too far. According to investigators, the police officer involved was on Hilburn Drive and made a left turn onto Old Pearsall Road to head south. The suspect driving a pickup truck was allegedly speeding northbound on Old Pearsall Road, lost control, slammed into the side of the police unit and took off. Police say the suspect drove about a quarter of a mile around the block without the front tire before they caught up to him to arrest him. Police say the driver, a male in his 40s, will be facing multiple charges in connection to this accident. Also on the scene, he was going to be evaluated under the suspicion of alcohol. Meanwhile, that officer was able to go home without any injury. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia, and a big day for the Spurs. Whew, take it on the Pelicans today, 2 o'clock. You can watch it right here on KSAT, a very important game because the Blazers lost and the Suns won. Mm. So there are more teams in it, but it's what we've been saying. Win and you're in. Exciting Wait, bubble so game. If they win that one, they're in? If they win, no, they still have to win a couple more. <laughs> but win in if general. they can continue to win, <laughs> there you go. the playoff Thank chances you. are there. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. Awesome. <laughs> Got excited there. 79 degrees at the airport in San Antonio. It's 80 in Del Rio, 79 in New Braunfels. A warm start to the day and a hot afternoon in the forecast for us. This forecast, I'll let you in on a little secret. It was really easy to make because I just copy and pasted what we had yesterday <laughs> because that's the way the weather is going to be today. A, a isolated shower storm is possible, but don't bank on the rain, bank on the heat. It's right. going to be hot. We'll be climbing up to 101 by Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Well, maybe Ralph will be the lucky 10% again. <laughs> he got some rain, so that's good news for him. I've decided any day that is over 99 degrees, we should only reference it as inflatable pool days. Inflatable pool days. Inflatable pool well, days. It's an inflatable pool week then. There we go. <laughs> All right, Numbers. Steph, Sarah, thank you so much. We'll see you back here at 8 o'clock. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. 
And this morning we're going to hear from the mayor about students returning to school in just a week or so. That's in today's Leading SA segment. But before that, we're going to take a live look out at the Alamo City. A beautiful start to your Sunday morning. We get to see some of those rays coming through, shedding some light here in San Antonio. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna, and it is Sunday, August 9th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, those were beautiful rays. Beautiful. Sarah yeah. told us the names yesterday. I want to say crepuscular. Yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I am so impressed by you guys. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we're learning a little bit more about the weather today. Uh, not only about those crepuscular rays, that's a scientific name for them, but we're also going to talk a little bit about climate change in, in the next about 30 minutes or so. Now, right now outside, it is warm to start the day. We're at 80 degrees at the airport, 77 at JBSA Randolph, 73 in Bernie, 78 in Helotus, 75 in Hondo, 75 in Seguin. So it's going to be a hot day, but let's say you want to go out to your local park or potentially even just a little walk along the river. Uh, it's going to be mostly cloudy for these morning hours. Pretty nice to go for a walk this morning. Uh, 85 right around 10. Then around the lunch hour, that's when we'll really start to be heating up. 90 degrees at noon. In the afternoon, 100 for the high temperature. Today's forecast very similar to yesterday. We did have one or two very stray showers move close to the I-35 corridor from the coastal plain, and that's why there's a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm today as well. It is breezy, and it'll continue to be breezy. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. We've got a lot to talk about in the forecast, including, like I said earlier, climate change in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. It's a story we've been following through the morning, an officer-involved crash late last night. Our Alicia Bedetta has been following it all morning long and we understand that uh, the officer uh, was, was hurt well, that officer was evaluated here at the scene. He didn't have to be taken to the hospital, but police tell me that he was able to leave this scene without any injury. So now we know that he's home recovering. But I want to show you, we came out here to the scene to show you exactly how this all played out. We know that this officer was at the stop sign here on Hillburn. He was going to make a left to head south on Old Pearsall Road. But that's when he got T-boned. He got T-boned right at this intersection here. There was a pickup truck that was heading northbound on, on Old Pearsall Road. And police say that this driver was allegedly speeding northbound on Old Pearsall, lost control, and slammed into the side of the police unit. And we want to show you here at the scene what it looks like. We still see a lot of the debris here at the intersection, um, even on the sidewalk. And the big thing that uh, we're seeing are these skid marks. Police at the scene did mention there were skid marks where they could see and follow the track of that driver who did take off after hitting that police unit. And you can see he was along the sidewalk, sidewalk here and a short distance away, that's when he was finally able to make it on the road. Um, police also tell us that when that suspect took off, they know that he drove about a quarter of a mile without his front left tire. What police know now about the suspect, I have that for you in the next half hour here on GMSA. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. New this morning, police arrested a man for breaking into a jewelry store on the north side. According to an arrest affidavit, they say this man, Richard Green, walked into the store at Loop 1604 in Blanco yesterday. They say he walked up to a jewelry case and smashed it with a hammer. When an employee approached him, he pulled out a handgun and started waving it in the air. He ran away, but officers were able to use surveillance video to ID him. He now faces charges of aggravated robbery. And another case, police arresting this man for breaking into a home in Wincrest, stealing a credit card and then trying to use it at a local Walmart. They say Michael Sperlin walked into an unlocked home in the 300 block of West Wind Circle back on July 3rd. He is now accused of stealing a credit card from the home, trying to use it on the Walmart at Walsham just down the street. An officer able to see the tracked purchases, then using surveillance video to find the cab he used to leave the store. The cab company able to identify Sperlin now facing charges of fraud. And taking a look outside with TransGuide this morning, roads looking pretty smooth right now. Didn't look like there's a lot of problems out there. There is I-10 in Callahan, I-10 in Frio, things running smoothly.
Well, the latest Bear County COVID numbers show 232 new cases and 10 new deaths, but COVID-19 related hospitalizations continue to decrease. And this morning we are joined by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Mayor. We're just going to jump right to it. How should the public interpret these new numbers? Would you say the decrease in hospitalizations is a good sign? It's a good sign, yes, absolutely. But it, it also shows you just how uh, insidious this virus is. You, you saw hospital numbers were in great shape back in April and May and just how quickly our cases started to accelerate um, in June and July. And it became a very deadly two months for us. And, and that really continues because the numbers in the hospitals are leading indicators, but they're also going down very slowly. Uh, the transmission level in the community is still, the positivity rate is still about 15% from our last indicator. Uh, so the transmission in the community is still quite high, and we've got to work together to bring that down uh, before school starts. And, and because we know that that's going to introduce more activity in the community, and, and we've got to get that transmission rate down below 5%. So we can have the testing and tracing and isolation protocols that we have in place do their job. And speaking of schools, the start of the school year for many large districts here just next week already. How has the city been working with our local districts? We've advised them not to go back to school in person. Uh, a lot of the school districts will start now for sure in, uh, on in distance learning. So most of the online learning. Uh, we've advised them though again uh, through the uh, Bear County uh, Public Health Authority that schools shouldn't really open until after Labor Day and we've now set up uh, Dr. Wu who is the Bear County Local Public Health Authority issued an amended directive last week that you can see on our website covid19.sanantonio.gov that links the reopening of in-person schools to certain warning indicators. Right now we're in the red zone which means that it is not safe to return to school in person because there's just too much transmission going on. Uh, but once we get that positivity rate down below 5%, once we see the 14 day sustained decline of cases, and we also see the doubling rate of cases, uh, the time it takes to double the rate, uh, the, the number of cases in our community go up, then it, it'll be safe. But it ties that timeline to a set of warning indicators that people can see on the website. There are clearly a lot of concerns with parents and teachers when it comes to virtual learning. One of those is the clear-cut digital divide here in our community. How have you guys been addressing that in the last few months? Yes, well, that's something we know have, has existed. So even last year, I put together a, a team that, put, that produced a digital inclusion report. From that, now that we're in this pandemic, we had a head start on bridging that divide. So we've been working with our local school districts as well as um, our uh, via Metropolitan uh, Transit Authority and other entities to start bridging that divide. So over the last few months since we approved the CARES Act, Bear County and the city of San Antonio have been putting uh, literally millions of dollars into solutions to connect folks who are at school. We're trying to get to 100 percent. I don't think there's a city in the country that's at 100 percent, but uh, in the event that there are students who need to use in-person facilities those will be made available, but we're hoping that the vast majority of students under this uh, directive, especially to keep it safe and healthy, are able to do some distance learning now. All right. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Mayor. A very different school year this year, definitely. Uh, also, President Donald Trump signed an executive order extending a moratorium on renters evictions. Is there a plan to address those evictions here? Well, uh, we have an emergency assistance program that we've had uh, roughly $75 million allocated to, and we're working with uh, renters and uh, homeowners who are missing, for, uh, missing payments to make sure that they can stay at home. So we're doing that very diligently right now. The Attorney General and the federal government preempt the city of San Antonio in a few ways of extending the moratoriums locally, uh, but we are encouraged that there seems to be more traction on um, on slowing down and ending evictions at the national level. The unfortunate part is that the emergency order uh, that the uh, president, I believe, signed last night doesn't really end evictions. It enables that to happen through a couple of federal departments, but we really need some relief. Right here now, locally, though, we are providing rental assistance. We're encouraging anyone who is needing of assistance for staying in their home, staying uh, in their apartments to please call 311. 
We have navigators, case managers staying, standing by to help make sure that they can you know, stay uh, current on their payments and, and avoid uh, being uh, evicted or foreclosed upon. Last question for you, Mayor. What is your message to the people of San Antonio if they were looking at those hospitalization numbers going down and they're thinking, oh, we can go out, we can put the mask down? Uh, not so fast. Uh, hang in there. Uh, the work that we've done over the last two months has started to pay off in terms of bringing this hospitalization rate under control. But we see how quickly things can get out of control. And we also see the devastation that's wrought economically and psychologically on our communities across the country. We've got to work together to continue to slow the spread and stop the spread of coronavirus while the, the scientists and medical professionals work on a vaccine. Until there is a vaccine, we're gonna to have to live with some modified behaviors, including keeping physical distance and wearing face masks when you're out in public. If we can do those minor things, which are relatively minor considering the devastation that this crisis has brought upon us. We can do those minor things, keeping physical distance, wearing face masks, avoid large crowds. We can get through this together, but let's keep working because this can get out of hand really quickly. And what you're doing right now is working. Those of you who are complying with those uh, behaviors that the public health professionals are telling you, it's working. It's working. Just keep it up. Thank you so much, Mayor Ron Nirenberg, for joining us early this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 811, 80 degrees out. And it's Spurs game day. That's right, in the bubble. So we will break down the playoff outlook, and we're going to tell you about today's game airing on KSAT 12. And climate change, an issue we are living with after the break. Sarah Spivey breaking down how it impacts Texas and how it has become a political issue. And taking a look outside with live cam, muggy little start to your day at 80 degrees. We're going to see the sun, though, and uh, it's going to be pretty hot all week long, but we're going to check in with Sarah to see how hot it's going to get. We'll be right back. The issue has inspired debates, global agreements, and acts of protest. Some even argue it's simply not real. Anytime you're dealing with something that's going to involve trillions of dollars, politics is going to get involved with it. But science shows Earth's climate is changing and has been changing throughout history. That evidence has taken the form of rising temperatures, shrinking ice sheets, and more extreme weather events. Floods, hurricanes, Wow. and raging wildfires. We would not be seeing the unprecedented extreme weather events that we're seeing if not for human-caused climate change. New research says children will bear 88% of the burden of disease related to climate change. You may notice the month of May was a little toastier than normal. And that's because Earth just experienced its hottest May on record. It's a global issue with local implications. But what does the future climate of Texas look like? Why is it something you should care about? And how did this issue become so polarizing? And KSAT explains climate change available on demand Thursday, August 13th. You're going to be able to stream it on demand on the KSAT TV app. It's also available on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other streaming services. I was honored to use a soundbite in there from one of our actual <laughs> newscasts, but the real star of the show, Sarah Spivey, joining us right now. Thank you, Max. Yeah, Katie Blake and I, meteorologist Katie Blake and I, are going to take a deep dive into climate change and really focus on how it's going to affect Texas, how it is affecting Texas, and what our weather could look like in the very near future here. Uh, and we're going to try to do it without... To really making it too controversial because, of course, as you know, uh, it is it has become a political issue. So we'll tackle that as well. First, I'd like to start with a weather 101. Ooh. Well, technically climate 101 uh -oh. question. Uh, one of our uh, interviews for this special is the Texas state climatologist, my old professor at Texas A&M University. And in research that they've done, by 2036, the number of 100 degree days is expected to blank in San Antonio from the 2000 to 2018 average. Steph, ladies first. Let's have a guess. Well, my guess is double. 
Double. Uh, I can't. Well, you can take the C. A and, C. A and B is out, and I can't say C, so I'm going to go triple. You can say C, Max. In fact, <laughs> C is the right answer. We don't tie here. Yeah, yeah you can tie. You absolutely can. All right. Uh, so. The number of 100 degree days is expected to double what the average was from 2000 to 2018. That would mean for us here in San Antonio, by 2036, we would have on average about 36 100 degree days each year. Right now, the average is about 14. So keep that in mind. It's getting warmer outside and the science is proving that. Time lapse though this morning, shows that it's a warm start to the day. Nice sun rays out there through the clouds. We're starting to see those clouds break up. 80 degrees outside right now, and it already feels like 85 because of the high humidity. Dew points are in the 70s and winds are from the south at about 10 miles per hour. It's 76 in Kerrville, 72 in Rock Springs, 79 in Del Rio, 79 in Eagle Pass, 77 in Carrizo Springs, uh, near 80 in Gonzales, 81 in Pleasanton, and 80 in New Braunfels. Yes, it is humid. You walk outside, you feel that humidity. There's no escaping it. It is summer after all, and we're used to being hot uh, and humid. And I want to show you for a moment yesterday's radar. The reason I want to show you yesterday's radar is because today's radar will probably look a lot like yesterday's radar with some showers and storms along the coast and even one or two making it to the I-35 corridor. And that's exactly what happened yesterday for areas right along the attic Atascosa and Bear County line, and then also through Comal County, we saw one isolated shower, maybe a few rumbles of thunder, but today's rain chance is minimal, 10%. Again, maybe one or two of those will make a run for the I-35 corridor, but that's about it. As you can see in the future cast, this is not going to be a rainy day by any means. It is going to be a hot day. Everybody is going to be experiencing the triple digit heat today. High temperature close to 100 degrees for just about everyone. One exception there would be the hill country. Higher elevations closer to 95 up in Kerrville and in Rock Springs. But 100 degree plus out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, Uvalde. That's the way the weather usually is in the uh, summer months. And so today is not going to be an exception. I do let, have to chuckle a little bit, though, because today's uh, weather is probably going to be exactly like yesterday's weather. We're calling it copy and paste deja vu forecast. That's the case. 85 at 10, mostly cloudy. Then into the afternoon, we'll be seeing partly cloudy skies, so a little bit more sunshine. There's that measly 10% chance for an isolated shower storm. One of our coworkers, he's over working on the prompter. He actually saw some rain yesterday. South winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. We could see a breeze or a gust up to 20 miles per hour, rather. And then in the evening, temperatures will fall into the 80s. Showing you the national weather pattern, there were reports of hail across the uh, central plains yesterday. That's where the risk for severe weather will be today. But really here in Texas and in San Antonio, the heat high is the main weather story for us. And I want to show you the future cast because even though that heat high is going to move a little bit off to the west during the week, it's still going to maintain strength. And that means high temperatures will be well into the triple digits, not only for us in San Antonio, but across the state of Texas with Houston being the exception because they're a little bit more humid and they get a little bit more rain than us here in San Antonio. But look at these numbers. Oh, impressive summer months. Just a reminder that tomorrow is a CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day. We're going to try to reduce our use from 3 to 7 p.m. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. A crucial day for the silver and black. It is game day for the Spurs taking on the New Orleans Pelicans this afternoon. And just to be frank, the pressure is on silver and black fighting to make the playoffs. They need a win and they need some help from other teams as well. To do that, they're going to need to get Lonnie Walker to continue his stellar play. The young guard, a major factor in the team's three wins, but only scoring a combined 14 points in San Antonio's back-to-back -back losses. Those losses, the Sixers and the Nuggets. Lonnie Walker says he had some family things going on, but his father gave him a good pep talk on the phone, helped him bounce back and have a great game against the Utah Jazz. My father called me and he got up in me, you know, he cursed me out, told me, told me how I was acting, how I look. Uh, and that's just all I needed because I know myself, I know my capabilities. Um, and God willing, God willingly, you know, everything will fall, fall its course. But I got to understand why I'm here and be grateful for what I'm doing. 
And you can check out Lonnie Walker the fourth and the rest of the silver and black today, two o'clock. You can watch it right here on ABC and KSAT. And tonight we're gonna have highlights and post game reactions. This is huge. This is crucial. And I have to say, Lonnie, Derek White, the young Keldon Johnson, they all look fantastic. They're fast. They're running up and down the court. I'm excited. Yes, it's very exciting, and it's going to be on KSET. So if you don't have the NBA app, Mom, you can watch it on KSET. <laughs> very exciting. Very exciting. You want to do it one more time before we go? Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. 827, 80 degrees out. And in our next half hour, we're going to hear from the president of the San Antonio Alliance of Teachers and Support Personnel about starting school in San Antonio. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. Yes, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Like, <laughs> it's going to be hot out there, literally. In the, in the last hour, we decided any day it's supposed to be more than 99 degrees, mm -hmm. inflatable pool day. All right. Well, it looks like it's going to be an inflatable pool day today. Yeah, yeah, people will be able to enjoy some time by the pool this afternoon, especially when temperatures crank up to 100, which is the forecast high. But at least we have beautiful sunrises and sunsets around the Alamo City this time of year. This is from last night out at Woodlawn Lake, another beautiful shot at Woodlawn Lake. You can see those cumulus clouds are a little bit tall as well. We did have a couple of isolated, very isolated showers that made it to I-35 from the coastal plain. We'll continue to have that same chance for a pop-up shower or storm in the afternoon, only 10%. Right now outside, it's 79 degrees in Lotus, 73 at Rio Medina, 79 at Port SA and at JBSA Randolph. It's 80 degrees though already at the airport, 82 in New Braunfels, 74 in Tarpley, and 75 in Hondo. Today's forecast is going to look very similar to yesterday. 85 around 10, 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies in the afternoon, winds from the south at 5 to 15 miles per hour, maybe even gusting up to 20 at times, so at least there will be a breeze. 100 degrees for the high temperature, another triple digit day on deck. And then in the evening hours, we'll cool down into the 80s, but it'll still be fairly muggy. Hey, we just got the pollen count in. I'll have a look at that and actually some video of the very isolated showers from yesterday. Max. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio police officer T-boned in his patrol unit by a driver of a pickup truck who left overnight. The accident happened just before midnight in the 5500 block of Old Pearsall Road. Alicia Barrera is live from where that accident happened. Now, Alicia, police are telling you that it took some time to track down that driver. Yes, it took them some time this morning. So this is where it happened, this intersection right here. And we know that that's where it was T-bone. And you can actually see the skid marks left behind all along the sidewalk here of that driver, um, showing that trail of him trying to get away. That driver eventually getting back on the road on North Old Pearsall Road. Police say that driver of the truck drove at least half a mile without one of the front tires. And again, eventually they did catch up to him. Authorities say this all happened after the police officer tried making a left from Hilburn Drive onto Old Pearsall Road to head south. This was around midnight. It's expected that the driver of the pickup truck was speeding, lost control, causing him to slam into the side of the police unit. And video shows the major damage done to the SAPD unit. The impact crushed the center and tail end of that police car, causing airbags to deploy and even some of those door handles falling off. We're told that officer didn't suffer any injuries. He was evaluated here at the scene while other officers uh, try to track down that driver. But again, no injuries to report. Meanwhile, the driver, that suspect, we know that um, he is going to be facing several charges. No name has been released, but we know that the driver is in his 40s and he was evaluated for suspicion of alcohol and again is, is expected to face multiple charges. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, Quesa, 12 News. Thank you, Lisi. In the midst of this pandemic, one of the biggest questions looming right now is what is going to happen with schools, students, teachers, and staff? In today's Leading SA segment, we have Alejandra Lopez, president of the San Antonio Alliance of Teachers and Support Personnel, joining us live right now. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. So right off the bat, where do you and the San Antonio Alliance of Teachers and Support Personnel stand right now? 
So at the moment, uh, we are a part of a citywide coalition that is calling for the first nine weeks of the school year to be completely online. Uh, we feel strongly that while our city is in the red zone, no teachers or support personnel should be working on campuses. It's just really an unnecessary risk for our community at the moment. And Alejandra, uh, I know we have interviewed some of the teachers with the San Antonio Alliance teachers and support personnel, and they have told us that, you know, if in a perfect world, they prefer person to person learning uh, over virtual learning, but I understand that's not the issue here. Absolutely not. No one is going to argue, certainly not me or any other teacher is going to argue that virtual learning is a replacement for face to face learning. We love being in the classroom. We love being with our students. Um, but at the moment, it's not a choice just between face to face instruction and virtual learning. It's a choice between virtual learning, which is going to keep our students, our teachers, our support staff um, safe and virtual and face to face learning, which is going to uh, have an unnecessary risk attached to it, bringing students, teachers into uh, a potentially unsafe workplace. And we've been told that teachers can stay home and remote teach if they have any medical concerns. So what exactly constitute a medical concern? So I think, you know, at this point, um, Human Resources is working with people with underlying health conditions. But the fact is, is that COVID is a brand new virus. Uh, what we are only starting to learn about is its long-term effects. So when you ask people to come to a school building where they could potentially come in contact with someone who has tested positive, not to mention the number of asymptomatic carriers, um, you are asking them to risk their health um, and the health of their family and their loved ones. And Alejandra, we know of uh, at Northeast ISD, there's uh, Castle Hills Elementary there, a year-round school. And so their teachers, well, we have been told that most of the teachers are in the building already and have been since July 21st. Have you been in contact with any of them? So our coalition, um, the San Antonio Coalition on School Reopening, does include parents, students uh, and other education unions throughout the district. So I know that uh, the unions in Northeast that we have been working with were not in support of teachers having to return to classrooms to uh, teach remotely from their classrooms. So, you know, like I said before, it's just really an unnecessary risk to bring so many people into one school building. You know, the city of San Antonio's website says we're in the red, stay home when possible. And so what we're asking is that districts really afford that opportunity to our educators and support staff. Earlier this morning, about eight o'clock, we spoke with Mayor Ron Nuremberg, actually here on Leading SA, and he talked about the specific zones, the red, yellow, and green zones. How have you been working with Metro Health and local leadership as schools set to begin opening? So, you know, we formed our coalition in May. I think that shows, you know, those of us that are really um, the most directly impacted by these decisions knew at the end of the school year that we needed to start working together and organizing around school reopening. And in June, we started talking about what it would look like to safely reopen. And at the very beginning of July, we um, put out a statement that asked for objective indicators based in public health, um, based in science, that really dictate when it's safe to bring people onto campuses. So, you know, I'm glad that the city is Working on that, you know, Dr. Wu's directive yesterday, uh, on Friday is going to help clarify, uh, you know, exactly when it is safe. But as I said before, right now we're in the red zone, stay home when possible, and, and we really would like educators and support personnel to have that option. And Alejandra, we understand there were some uh, personnel or staff, custodial staff that weren't able to stay home during March, that they were still providing meals, still uh, on school campus. I understand that uh, you guys were trying to get hazard pay, but sort of like back pay for that time period. Absolutely. You know, our union from the very beginning has said that our frontline workers, our custodial staff and our food service staff who have been working since March, providing meals to our um, students in our community. They've been working all summer to provide meals. Anyone who is having to report to work during this pandemic should be compensated fairly for that. And that is something that our union is continuing to push. All right, thank you, Alejandra, for joining us this morning. This is something that a lot of people are watching closely right now. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too.
And happening this week on KSET 12, we're going to be hosting a back to school town hall focusing on learning during a pandemic. Our guest speakers included district superintendents and members of the mayor's school task force. They're going to be answering your questions and we're going to have a live chat going where viewers can chime in. So that's happening Tuesday, August 11th, starting at 6.30 p.m. And in your campaign headline, several high profile Democrats and Republicans will speak at this year's Democratic National Convention. Hillary Clinton, Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, Michelle Obama and former Republican governor of Ohio, John Kasich, will all give a speech. They plan to support a message of unity in American politics. The event runs August 17th to 20th and has been moved online. Presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden is scheduled to accept the nomination from Delaware due to the pandemic. And speaking of Biden, we could find out who his running mate is going to be for the presidential election as of this week. Now, as possible, vice presidential candidates continue to meet with Biden, one of whom, Michigan's governor, Gretchen Whitmer, Detroit newspaper, the Detroit News, confirming the flights from Michigan state capital to Delaware, Biden's home state. She is just one of a handful of finalists to meet with the former vice president. This is despite many supporters and black leaders urging Biden to choose a woman of color. The Biden campaign has not commented on the reported meeting. And a campaign event for Libertarian presidential candidate Joe Jorgensen was canceled, not because of the pandemic, but because she was bit by a bat. So Jorgensen made the announcement on her Facebook page that she had to cancel her campaign stop in Jackson, Mississippi, on the advice of her doctor. Instead of campaigning as planned, she was getting rabies shots. Now, Jorgensen does not think she was actually exposed to rabies. But the shots are an important precaution. Being a third party candidate for president is challenging enough, she says. Jorgensen says she is shaking the incident off and will resume her campaign stops as soon as possible. And time now, 842, 80 degrees out. And let's take a look at what's coming up next. Well, it is one of the best days of the year. It is a time to relax, a time to enrich your mind. It is Book Lovers Day. We're gonna explain what that means and how you can celebrate right after the break. And taking a look outside with live can, it is a muggy start to your day. But as Max said, it's a good day for that inflatable pool. In fact, it's a good week, and I'm guessing it's gonna be a good month. <laughs> so break out your inflatable pools. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 846. So trending right now on KSET.com, officials with the National Park Service say the Padre Island National Seashore should reopen in the next week or two. All of the beaches and access points were closed after Hurricane Hannah hit South Texas. County officials have cleared the debris, but they are still getting the area ready for visitors. All right. Have you been to Padre Island? Not in a while. Well, not not recently. No, <laughs> honestly. Sarah, what's your favorite Texas beach? Um, I, you know, South Padre is beautiful because mm -hmm. it's practically I feel like Mexico, there's a bike coming up. so it's a beautiful <laughs> Mexican beach. But I like Puerto Aransas. Mm. Ah. I like Puerto Aransas a lot. Yeah, mm. it's good too. And it'll be good to visit after, you know, all the devastation they had. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, mask lovers, you can rejoice. Turns out you can sanitize your N95 mask in a rice cooker. I need a rice cooker. Have the mask. <laughs> Researchers say one cycle in a rice cooker or electric instant pot can disinfect your mask of four different classes of viruses, including the coronavirus. They re recommend you put it on top of a towel in the cooker so the mask doesn't burn at the bottom. Also, do not put your mask in a microwave. Clearly a fire hazard. And today is National Book Lovers Day. And what better way to celebrate than going to your local library? So remember right now, San Antonio libraries are still operating during the pandemic with safety precautions in place. You can call your local library to schedule contact-free pickups, use a computer and Wi-Fi. You can also learn more and read about other trending stories right now on KSET.com. And it is a perfect way to get out of the heat. Absolutely. That is true. It is gonna be a hot day. Some people, however, we're lucky yesterday and got 
that 10% chance for a stray shower. I want to show you this video uh, from the south side of Bear County right at the Atascosa line. My favorite thing about this is you can see just how heavy that rain is falling down, but then also the rays of sunlight there uh, in the background. That's pretty beautiful to look at as well. So yeah, we'll continue to carry a 10% chance for one of those stray showers to happen somewhere around the KSAT 12 viewing area. But rain chances are not looking good for us today or over the next seven days. In fact, one of the things that we're seeing going down because rain chances are going down is mold. Mold is falling, which is nice. It's now low at 400. Fall Elm is present right now. It's low. Uh, yesterday was the first time we've seen Fall Elm on the pollen count for the season. I don't know about you, but it's nice to see the word fall on the map, just plain and simple. Reminds us that uh, fall is around the corner as well as cooler temperatures, but not in the week ahead. Uh, pigweed is low as well at 10. Uh, right now outside, we're seeing a lot more sunshine than how we did at starting the day. It's 80 degrees, still mostly cloudy and humid. Humidity at 79%. Dew points are in the 70s. It feels warmer than 80 degrees because of the high humidity. And we've got a southerly breeze at about 10 miles per hour. Today, we could could see wind gusts of up to 20 miles per hour from the south and from the southeast. So that's welcome too because we'll take anything to cool us down uh, with these high temperatures expected this afternoon. Right now though, it is about the coolest it'll be all day and it's still pretty warm. 76 in Bandera, 75 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 79 in Holotus, 84 degrees already in New Braunfels. Going to be a triple digit plus day out in New Braunfels. 82 in Pleasanton and 78 in Divine. Elsewhere, we're seeing temperatures just generally in the upper 70s. 70s or low 80s and it is humid. Dew points in the 70s, which is at the absolute tippity top of our scale. It is oppressively humid outside. You notice that humidity when you step out the door. But the good news is into the afternoon, humidity will go down a little bit into the 60s. And it'll still be muggy, but we won't have to be dealing with extremely dangerous heat index values because humidity will go down a little bit. And then the cycle continues. We'll see the return of a higher humidity as we start the day tomorrow and start the work week. So today's rain chance, as I mentioned, is really confined to the coastal plain. Isolated showers and storms from Gonzales to Victoria to Beeville out to Houston. One or two may make it somewhere along that I-35 corridor this afternoon. That's why we're carrying a 10% chance for a very isolated stray shower storm in San Antonio. And you can see that on the future cast. Very isolated, maybe one or two making it to that I-35 corridor, and that's about it. But take a look at these afternoon temperatures. 101 in New Braunfels, 101 one in Seguin, just about everywhere you look around Bear County in the triple digits. One exception is going to be the higher elevation, so up closer to Bernie, Leon Springs. High temperatures are probably going to be in the mid to upper 90s rather than 100 degrees, but that's still a hot day in my book. So repeat weather. I cannot tell you how many times it was easy for me to make this forecast because I just took what we had yesterday and applied it today because that's the weather pattern we're having. 85 at 10, 90 at noon, 100 degrees for the high temperature with that 10% chance for a stray shower. Don't forget, breeze is going to be nice. Southeast up to about 15 miles per hour, gusting up to 20. Like I said earlier, very quiet across the United States with the exception of the Central Plains. Heat high. Adam Kasky calls it the big blue bully on the map because it pretty much blocks out all weather patterns, sending them up and over the state of Texas. And take a look at these temperatures. Yesterday, I had my Bitmoji as the uh, watermelon. Today, it's me skating on a popsicle reminding everyone to stay cool because it's going to be hot. 101 by Tuesday and Wednesday, a week full of triple digits. Even if for some reason your thermometer doesn't reach 100 degrees, it's going to feel like that anyway. Just a reminder, tomorrow is a CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day. We're going to reduce our use from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. and help save the power grid a little bit of stress. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us, Sarah. What are we going to look at this week? Feeling hot, hot, hot. 100 <laughs> degrees just about every single day. Have Lots a great week, though. No rain. Boo. Bye, guys. <laughs>